Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, welcome to this pick a card. This particular pick a card reading is going to take a look at something that needs or requires your attention. So we are going to ask the question today, what is it that is asking for your attention? What is it that needs your attention? So if you have not as of yet chosen a card stack or a crystal on the table, by all means, go ahead and do that now. There are timestamps for the very beginning of the video where you can pause and take a look at a picture clip up close or a video clip up close in silence in order to choose your cards or your crystals. If during that time you feel led to pick more than one card stack or a crystal on the table, go ahead and listen to your intuition. That's always going to be highly encouraged here. Um, these readings are also timeless, so whether you watch it at the upload time or sometime after, if you feel an intuitive nudge to watch, if it's placed into your awareness, there could be a message here for you. Nonetheless, I always say um, that if this particular reading doesn't connect for you, um, you can maybe check out my pick a card playlist. I have a bunch of pick a card readings I've already done. There could be one in there that has a message that's better suited to you. And let's say if all is said and done, I'm not the reader for you. That's okay. YouTube has many readers out there. I'm pretty sure there's going to be a reader out there that has the messages that you are looking for this time around. So I have Aragonite and the Joie de Vie tarot on the table. I have Amethyst and Line Strider tarot and I have Citrine and Anima Mundi tarot on the table for you today. So go ahead and choose your cards or your crystals and we'll get into the very very first reading. Number one viewers you chose this Aragonite crystal and your tarot is the Joie de Vie tarot. Uh, that is what I'll be using for you today. So we are looking at whoa I didn't even get a chance to ask but that's okay, I will take it. Eight of Wands and the Fool, okay? So we're asking, what is it that is requiring your attention? What is it that's asking for your attention or needs your attention? Pile number one viewers. So let's see. All right, so we have the Eight of Wands the full energy, and we also have the four of cups. So what I'm getting from this um, is that there is something I feel that you might be hesitating to do. Um, and it could be with the four of cups, there's a hesitancy or a delay, right? Because that's what it's feeling like. There feels like there's a delay in taking action with the eight of wands towards something new, someone new perhaps. A new place, a new journey, a new path you should take. It's almost like this feeling of you know you should, but you're 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 holding out for something. Um, and this is feeling like the Eight of Wands, especially because these two cards flipped over. So to me, it's kind of like emphasizing right their energy. I'm feeling like they're. There shouldn't be a hesitancy. You, you should, with the Eight of Wands, like just go out and do it. So basically what is needing or asking your for your attention is the thing that you've been putting off, it feels like. Whatever that could be to you. Um, it feels like it's new territory, though, with the full energy over here. So if you've been hesitant to do something, maybe take a risk on yourself, or, or you know maybe you have fears that are holding you back, um, there is a desire for movement here. Maybe with the Four of Cups, you're waiting to see the green light to give you the go so you can do it. But Spirit is kind of saying, don't wait for the green light. If you feel intuitively drawn to seek this new thing with the full energy, aim high with the Eight of Wands. You know, because when I look at the Eight of Wands, I always think of like also the original depiction of the card that is like arrows shooting through the air, right? So aim high. Leave your fears behind, right? The fool is your opportunity to, to be brave and take a risk and a leap of faith on yourself. Oftentimes with the fool, I call it a bravery test because, you know, we have to brave the unknown and take a step forward in the right direction, even if at times it scares us. And oftentimes the fool does travel lightly, so he carries very minimal on his back. All he has is this tiny little satchel that he has or she has in this case with her, right? 
that's all that's there. Like, that's all that the fool takes with it is the bare necessities. Everything else that it doesn't need, whatever is not going to help the journey moving forward gets left behind because it's just going to weigh it down from doing what it wants to do, right? The Four of Cups is saying that even though at this time you don't see a way, that doesn't mean that these things aren't aligning for you. This is the card that I always say, just because you don't have it in your present doesn't mean it doesn't exist in your future. Like that's how I describe this card. Oftentimes you don't see the blessings and the things aligning up for you around you. You're so caught up and you know, you could be very caught up in the moment of like everything that you're not happy with. This is like the status quo. This is just being feeling unsatisfactory. Sometimes it's the meh energy that I mentioned. You're feeling very bleh about your situation, maybe even your environment. There's a desire with the eight of wands because the wands does talk about, you know, action, speed, momentum, inspiration, the way that the divine moves you. Uh, there's a desire for new territory. There's a desire for somewhere else or something new. Um, and sometimes you do have to just aim and go for it with the full energy and not let the uncertainty of the present situation stop you from trying, right? Sometimes with the Four of Cups, we can still fail to see the blessing coming our way because it's it's coming our way in the background, but we're too caught up in our own um, kind of like mucky energy to really see all the beautiful energy trying to come our way and trying to open up to us. The Fool is the new energy that's trying to open up to you. So this is saying the thing that requires your attention is the thing that you've been putting off or hesitant to take action on, maybe because you don't believe that you can do it. Maybe you're waiting for the green light, but sometimes we just got to take that leap for ourselves. Trust that the, you know, that, that if we jump, the net will appear. The eight of wands is also travel movement, right? Two cards of movement here because the fool does take a journey and then the eight of wands does actually talk about travel. So there's a desire to go and, and go now. Um, and that's what requires your attention. So I kind of feel like something's been put on the back burner and the Eight of Wands is like ready to, to get out there and go with the Fool. To just do it. The Eight of Wands could also talk about some form of communication to get the ball rolling with the Fool as well. So I don't know if you've um, been putting off maybe doing some networking, um, maybe forming connections because again the eight of wands can talk about that communication phone calls emails texts could be cupid arrows as well so love again whatever it is that you feel passionate about um there's a desire to move forward toward it with the fool but i don't know if there's a concern with the four of cups of maybe the other person let's say if it's a person the other person not being interested Right? There's a desire to make a move towards somebody, but you could be afraid that the person isn't interested or does not see you. Um, figuratively, they're not really seeing you and what you offer. So there's a fear, maybe a little bit of a fear of rejection. And I'm the type of reader, if I see a couple different scenarios, I will try my best to address them all. And this is another scenario in regards to love. You could be feeling passionate towards somebody wanting to take a risk and take a leap of faith to put yourself out there to get their intention, but you're afraid they don't really see you that way. And the reason why I say that they probably don't see you or you perceive them as not seeing you um, is because oftentimes the Ace of Cups is floating in the background of the Four of Cups card. And that oftentimes can, you know, be a metaphor for love trying to come your way, but you're so caught up in your, you know, mess that you don't really see it. So you could, you could feel that the, the other person doesn't see you because they're focused on something else. You're the Ace of Cups trying to float their way, but you're afraid they don't really notice you that way. So it's like, oh, they're not that into me. So why am I going to take a leap of faith to communicate how I feel and, you know, kind of put myself out there with them? But the other thing is, what are you waiting for, right? Because the Eight of Wands is requiring that action and that leap of faith. A leap, look, leaps of faith on yourself also do help boost your self confidence, right? So it's like once you get over that hurdle, you're not really scared to, you know, put yourself out there anymore. And this could be a chance for you to do that. 
and that's kind of what's requiring your attention. You've been looking to make maybe for some of you in love, you've been making or looking to make a move towards somebody, but you hesitate because you're afraid they don't see you that way. Um, likewise, it could be love the other way around, right? It could be that somebody's looking to come towards you or communicate with you um, and you've been putting them off, right? You could also be putting somebody off. They could be sending you messages with the eight of wands and trying to take leaps of faith towards you um, and to maybe start something new with you, but you're kind of not like into them that way. And this could be spirit's way of saying, well, maybe you should give them a chance, right? It could be the ace of cups for you floating in the background that you're not seeing for yourself too. And you know, if we flip the script there a little bit. So whatever you've been putting off, whoever you've been putting off or whatever you're afraid is going to put you off. This is what's requiring your attention. It's time to take leaps of faith on yourself and give something or someone a shot. Um, if it's something you've been passionate about and you're waiting for the green light, again, it's that feeling of don't wait for spirit to knock you upside the head to tell you it's okay, <laughs> right? Or to give you the green light. It's like, take a chance on yourself. I kind of feel like there's a bravery test involved in this full energy here on the table for you, pile number one viewers. And spirit's looking and waiting for you to kind of like trust yourself in taking that leap. Instead of, you know, the universe putting it right in front of your face. Again, the Ace of Cups is never right in front of your face when it's floating in the background of Four of Cups. It kind of feels like trust yourself and the rest will follow. So anything you've been afraid to do, any chances you've been afraid to take, this is a chance to take that leap and trust that spirit will deliver the goods is kind of what this is saying with these three cards. Hmm, so... Oh, another thing, real quick, Eight of Wands. Again, remember I mentioned networking, phone calls, messages, emails, texts. Again, if you've been hesitant to call somebody back, if somebody called you and left a message, right, that could be what is requiring your attention. You should call whoever it was that called you and left several messages. You should call them back. Because with the Eight of Wands and the Fool Away flipped over before I even got into your reading, kind of felt like it was important. That's why I kept it. There could be an important message trying to come through, but you're avoiding returning the call with the Four of Cups. And you don't realize that there could, there's a blessing in that phone call trying to come your way, but you're maybe too busy at the time or you've got other things going on. You haven't been able to return the call. But it feels like there's something trying to come your way, but again, your focus is elsewhere and you can't receive the message that's trying to enter because you don't call back. Okay, I'm just saying that uh, because I saw that for a second there. Also, new locations, relocating. Again, um, Eight of Wands and the Fool especially. You could be debating relocating and moving somewhere and you're waiting for the right moment to just pop up and get that ball rolling for you. But there again, this is a chance for you to brave unknown territory. Like don't wait for everything to just uh, completely, right? Like I said, you don't want the universe to have to wait to slap you in the face in order to give you the green light to go. I think this is a test for some of you especially with the fool and the eight of wands to take that leap on yourself and trust that, you know, great spirit will catch you jump in the net will appear. So again, if you're afraid of relocating or moving or doing something different, maybe, um, trying, maybe even trying a different line of work, right? Sometimes we, we expect spirit to kind of just do, um, how would you say, it's almost like, like I said, to slap you upside the head and present it to your, like right in front of your eyes. And sometimes that's not how it always works. I wish it did. It would just make life a lot easier, right? 
Um, but sometimes we have to discern the nuggets for ourselves along the journey like the fool. Um, I think you're waiting for a green light, but it's it's saying to just go and everything else will follow. Okay, so that's what I have for you. Uh, so let's see if we can get some cards. This was recently donated uh, to the channel. So thank you, Stephanie, for donating this beautiful Language of Flowers uh, Oracle deck. That's what I will be using to get a final message for you as well as um, I'm going to roll the dice for some angel numbers as well. Oh, okay. No way. I was just thanking Stephanie, right, for this beautiful deck. And we get a Stephanotis. So very similar in feel to her name. Anyhow, it says cooperation. Take the hand offered or ask. Look at that. Take the hand offered. Again, something is being offered to you. It could be a, a message that you're uh, hesitating to uh, call back, like a phone call that you're hesitating to call back. There's something being offered in this leap of faith or in a phone call or some kind of communication. This is what this is telling me. Let's see if we can get one more. Take the hand offered or ask. Okay, let's see. There's something being presented is what this is telling me. Let's see if we can get one more. Again, um, if I go back to the idea that, you know, something could be presented to you, but maybe you're just not that into them or it or whatever it is, um, you could be hesitating, but not realize that it is a blessing. Kind of, I feel like it's saying it feels like a blessing in disguise, but anyhow, there's something trying to come towards you to open up this new door to you with the fool. You might not be completely feeling it either. Or feeling it's the right time or maybe it's just like oh I don't know if it's the right thing uh, maybe it wasn't as you expected right and you might be hesitant to take the offer but it's requiring your attention it's requiring um, it's asking that you you take that leap of faith and see where it takes you because there's this new energy trying to open up with fool and the eight of wands to get the ball rolling and get it get things moving quickly but you're you're putting it off right and whatever it is that you're putting off is what requires your attention all right so it says pitcher plant insight the answers are there for those who look oh my gosh could this be any more accurate like i said with the four of cups sometimes there's things lingering or energy lingering around in the background that we don't always see for ourselves because we're so caught up and focused on other things that we can't see for ourselves so again the four of cups is like don't miss an opportunity right It's like a missed opportunity. You don't want to miss an opportunity with the Four of Cups. You want to be alert. You want to be aware. You don't want to be so caught up in your funk that you fail to see what's happening around you. Or you fail to see that maybe an opportunity or an offer is being presented to you that could really be good for you. And this is that, right? The answers are there for those who look. So be aware. Keep your eyes peeled. There is something that is requiring your attention and it's... To bring you closer to the very thing you you seek with the fool. So whatever you're putting off is requiring your attention. Whoever it is. Whoever you're not calling back. Um, don't miss an opportunity is what this is saying too. With, with putting it off a day longer. Right? So if you're not familiar with my readings. I do roll the dice for angel numbers every once in a while. To get additional messages for you, all you have to do is research the numbers that come up in this reading yourself. Find a source that you trust. There are several out there online. I don't like to recommend one because at the end of the day, it could be one that you do not connect with. And I wouldn't want any of the magic to be lost because of that. So I always say, look up a source that you trust for yourself um, and find out the number interpretations that way. Um, Again, I don't like to recommend a website as well because 
oftentimes there's some magic to be found in the journey to researching the numbers for yourself. And I wouldn't want to rob you of any synchronicity that spirit might place on your path while doing that research. Um, that's why I also, you know, recommend that you don't put the number interpretation in the comment section because, you know, you're, you could be robbing somebody of finding their own magic or finding their own nuggets along the way to that research. So I'm very cautious of that. Um, but anyhow, these numbers may indeed confirm some things I've already said in this reading and or provide additional messages for you. So let's go ahead and see what this number is for you. Pile number one. Okay, again, hold on. Two. All right, so we have a three. An eight, so three, eight. And that is a 10. So 3810 is your angel number. So 3810, go ahead and look that up. You could also reduce that number by adding 3 plus 8 plus 1. Um, you can reduce it down. Go ahead and check out that number and see what it brings to you, pile number one viewers. If you feel that this has helped or connected for you, by all means, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Like, share, subscribe as well to support this channel. Uh, perhaps even click the little bell for notifications so you don't miss out on future content. And if you ever want to book a personal reading with me, all you have to do is check me out on Etsy. The link to my Etsy shop is in the description box down below. It's just a matter of checking me out on Etsy, seeing what readings are available, and you could book a reading at any time. Much love to you. Pile number one viewers, take care and keep shining. Pile number two viewers, you chose this lovely piece of amethyst as your crystal. This is the Line Strider Tarot. This is the tarot that I will be using for your reading. We're asking about what is it that is asking for your attention? What is it that needs your attention, pile number two viewers? Let's see. Pile number two viewers, what is it that needs your attention? All right. Whoa, hold on. We have the Ten of Pentacles, Five of Wands, and let's even get another card. Call number two viewers, what is it that is asking or needing your attention? All right. Let's see what we have here. Queen of Swords. Okay. So right away, it's giving me the vibes of communication with the Queen of swords and the need for a resolution um maybe some between some bickering family members or a friend or somebody that maybe needs a good talking to i don't know if you've been putting that off ten of pentacles can talk about the you know our our commitments to things and people and things that have longevity right and oftentimes you can talk about life partner energy you could talk about the things that we have a history with uh, or a legacy with and oftentimes that does talk about family and the people that are closest to us um, it's earthly energy as well it could also be finances that need your attention um, maybe there are some discrepancies in regards to the ten of pentacles with finances and um, there's I say discrepancies because of the five of wands and that requires with the queen of swords a sharp eye to maybe look at your finances with the Queen of Swords, who has the ability to be very hyper-focused when she wants to be and can be very discerning as well. So if something's off with the money situation or something just doesn't seem right there, there is a need to put that in order or take a good look at it, in other words, with the Ten of Pentacles. Um, because it feels like with the Five of Wands, the word I got was discrepancies. In your, in your budget or with your finances or with a bill or something like that. That requires your attention as well. Um, it could be the household budget also with the Ten of Pentacles. There is something that feels um, with the Five of Wands a little unpredictable or uncertain. Um, it feels like if there is, right, a communication issue with the Queen of Swords, <coughs> In regards to somebody close to you with the Ten of Pentacles. There's a need to resolve that conflict. So that is what is requiring your attention or needs your attention or is asking for your attention. That there be some kind of resolution where you can talk 
and sort things out with somebody. So I don't know if you're avoiding communication with somebody, somebody's avoiding communication with you, but there's a need to resolve some conflict with the Five of Wands because the Five of Wands can talk about petty disputes and the fact that sometimes you're not always on the same page with people. Um, maybe it's a situation that needs resolved also and needs clearing up with communication in regards to work as, as well, or maybe even with coworkers. The Five of Wands can talk about competition in the workplace or the way that maybe you don't you know, see eye to eye or you butt heads with not only family members or friends or whatever people that you know are close to you, but it can also talk about butting heads with your co-workers. So there could be a need to set the record straight. I'm hearing with the Queen of Swords in regards to a co-worker situation or speaking to somebody with a you know higher level of authority to sort out that mess with the person that you're in conflict with, with the Five of Wands. But also likewise, same thing applies if it's a friend or a family member or somebody that you love. Um, there is a need to sort out the disputes and find some sort of compromise uh, in this situation to talk it over, to gain clarity. Because at the end of the day, the Queen of Swords, she's also, by the way, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. Queen of Swords always delivers the truth. She's always looking and seeking the truth of a matter. She cuts through to the core of a situation and no one can escape her sword right she's pretty much tough as nails she's backbone of steel um so it could be that there's a need to right what's requiring your attention is that you kind of like set the record straight with somebody or tell them how you feel finally communicate those words even if it might be confrontational with the five of wands but at the end of the day this is about your stability um, or need to stabilize an uh, unpredictable situation with them. And the Queen of Swords is going to speak her truth. So what is requiring your attention? Well, that you speak your truth to someone or in a situation that maybe is imbalanced. Definitely a need to communicate one's thoughts with the Queen of Swords. Maybe make a phone call. Um, maybe go visit somebody maybe visit a family member that maybe, you know, there's a, I don't know why I got the vibe of, somebody needs to apologize for whatever reason. Uh, I got that feeling. There could be a need to apologize to someone or someone needs to apologize to you. Again, setting that record straight. And instead of being at odds, it's like, hearing what the other person has to say like you both need to hear what the other person has to say and again the queen of swords will deliver the truth um the life partner energy is popping up for me also with this ten of pentacles the energy of loyalty with the dogs in the card of the Ten of Pentacles, because dog energy is is a symbol of loyalty. And we have the dogs again over here with the Five of Wands. So I don't know if this communication has to do with someone's loyalty. You could be questioning someone's loyalty with the Queen of Swords. And she could be, because Queen of Swords is that kind of energy. She will call you out on your BS in a heartbeat and not even blink or flinch at all while doing it. So, yeah, maybe you've been biting your tongue with somebody for a while. And this is what's asking for your attention, that you not do that anymore. That you let somebody know how you feel and that you speak your mind. Because, again, there's a foundation here with the Ten of Pentacles. With this person. Um, you know, and it could be that as soon as you get the, you speak your mind or you say what you need to say or, you know, the truth comes out or you, you clear the air, right, with the Queen of Swords. You know, this Five of Wands, it is a minor arcana. It's not like the end of the world, right? It's just, it will get cleared up. And, you know, you can go back to normal with the Ten of Pentacles where things are secure again. I'm also getting vibes of healthy boundaries. So there could be a need to 
you know, that's requiring your attention. Basically, what's requiring your attention is that you would have to set a healthy boundary in a situation with someone. Somebody that you have history with. And let them know that the Queen of Swords does not tolerate that BS, right? It's setting a healthy boundary um, for everyone in the situation over here with the Ten of Pentacles. So that's requiring your attention. You might have be you might be putting that off. You might have put it off too long, even. It's better to uh it's, there's this feeling of it's better to nip it in the bud now before something escalates in the situation. You don't want to let this go on too long before setting that healthy boundary because I think it'll be that much harder to set the situation straight. Also with the Ten of Pentacles, if I go back to the aspect of money, again, um, there could be a conflict or disagreements or disputes when it comes to finances, whether that be just in your own personal life or in regards to a family matter. So that could also be what's requiring your attention that you handle that situation and make sure that everybody's on the same page budget wise. That there aren't any discrepancies moving forward that you can clear up those discrepancies and that way you know everything is the way it should be after the fact after you've cleaned it up right i'm just looking at like the queen of swords got a lot on her mind she has a lot on her mind she's very pensive there's some there's something that you could be deep in thought about as well Something maybe challenging you, an internal or uh, a, it feels it feels like internal external conflict that maybe your your mind is wrapped up in. There could be a conflict outside of you in your environment, in your circumstances, maybe money wise as well. And it's like you don't want somebody to mess with your money too. I can see it that way with these cards, and that needs to be addressed or handled. Um, but I'm also just getting the vibe that. There's something that's uh, minor, it is minor, right, with the five of wands that maybe is disrupting your foundation with the ten of pentacles. Because ten of pentacles is secure. It's earth, right? It's safe. It's things that are built up over time but are meant to last. So there could be some kind of internal conflict as well in your own mind and heart maybe that's that needs to be resolved. Maybe your mind is telling you one thing, your heart is telling you another, and it's kind of shaking up the foundation a bit with the Ten of Pentacles. And there's a need to sort that out. And that is what's requiring your attention as well. It could be a circumstance outside you that needs resolved as well. You're putting a lot of thought into how to resolve it. Because again, it could be messing with your foundation, your earthly, your material world, maybe your money, maybe your home, your family, whatever this is needs to kind of get sorted out. And that is what's requiring your attention at this time. But trust with the Queen of Swords that she, again, will, she will find the missing piece of the puzzle uh, in order to resolve it. She always does because she that's what she aims for. She aims for the truth. And she's a seeker, right? She seeks. And she does hold the sword of truth. And the sword of truth does reveal, right? It cuts through the core of any given situation. And it reveals things to us to give us clarity of mind. So it kind of feels like handle this, right? Take care of it. Nip it in the bud now. Um, so that way you can move forward with peace of mind. That's what's requiring your attention. Whatever this conflict over here with the five of wands is or discrepancy is, take care of it now so that way you can sleep at night and not have to worry about it anymore. Okay. So let's grab uh, some little oracle cards here. This is the Language of Flowers deck. This was recently donated by Stephanie. So thank you, Stephanie, for this lovely deck. Let's see if we can get a few of these as final oracle cards and then i'm going to roll the dice for some angel numbers for this reading as well so let's see just at least two cards okay 
All right, so this one says peace. Be calm and calm will come. So there you go. There's like I was mentioning peace of mind, right? There's a need to kind of sort this out so that way you have peace of mind. So the longer you put it off, right? Um, you don't want it to get bigger unnecessarily. If you can handle it now, handle it. Nip it in the bud now and peace will follow, right? So yeah, there's a need to have peace also between maybe you and someone. If there's conflicts and you're not getting along, you're not seeing eye to eye. There's a need to have peace between you. Or sort it out or come to a resolution so you can have that. So it says, yeah, Red Rose, courage, be brave, be strong, believe. So yeah, sometimes, um, you know, it takes courage to... To confront a situation, right? That might not always be pleasant. But this is saying, you know, that you're brave. You can handle this. You are the queen of swords. You can easily confront the situation and put it at, put it to rest, I guess. is Yeah, put it to rest. Squash it is kind of what this feels like. You might also, with this reading, you might also be the go-between. Right. It could be it could be that there are a couple of family members that are bickering and you're the one who brings the common sense to the matter. Right. Um, to be that mediator. With the Queen of Swords here. So, yeah, there's a need to bring peace to a situation, to clear the air, uh, to confront the issues that does take a little courage, but you, you know, with the Queen of Swords, you're strong. She is. She has a backbone of steel. She has what it takes. She has grit, a lot of grit to get the job done, even if it might be a sticky situation or things might seem a little unpredictable. She has what it takes to resolve a matter and to gain clarity and perspective over the entire situation. So go ahead and do that. Um, I think I think it'll resolve itself just fine. So that is what's requiring your attention. Um, let's see if we can get some angel numbers for this reading. Um, if you're not familiar with my reading, sometimes I will roll the dice to get angel numbers for additional messages. The angel number interpretations, uh, they may indeed confirm some things I've already said in this reading and or provide additional messages for you and you alone. Uh, what I always say is go ahead and do your research. Uh, research a source to interpret the numbers, a source that you trust the most. I don't want to recommend a source because it could be one you do not connect with or resonate with and at that point it could lose some of the magic. I encourage you always to find your own synchronicity and serendipity while uh, or finding finding your own serendipity and synchronicity while doing your own research. Um, I don't want to rob you of any nuggets that you might find along the way by providing you an, a quick link to the number itself so I always encourage you to do your own research so you can find your own magic. In addition to that, I always discourage people from putting the number interpretation in the comments section because, again, you don't want to rob somebody of finding their own magic. Again, sometimes spirit will put you on the path to find other uh, clues that you need and other serendipity that you need for your journey. And if I gave you a shortcut, you might lose that experience, right? So let's see what these numbers are for you for this reading pile number two viewers. Let's see what your angel numbers are. All right, so we have 11. Four and six. So eleven forty six is your angel number. Eleven forty six is your angel number. Go ahead and research that number. See what it brings to you. Again, I just think this reading is basically what needs your attention is maybe for you to talk to somebody, communicate to somebody, resolve an issue, uh, sort it out, and bring everything into alignment again so go ahead and look up that number see what it brings to you again if you want to support this channel like share subscribe uh, if you feel that this has connected for you leave me a comment in the comment section down below and if you want to take it a step further to support what i do on youtube uh, check me out on etsy the link to my shop my Etsy shop is in the description box down below. I have personal readings as well as handmade crystal jewelry there. You can pay me a visit at any time. So much love to you, pile number two viewers. Take care and keep shining. Pile number three viewers, you chose this lovely piece of citrine. That is your crystal. That's going to go here. This is your tarot deck. This is the Anima Mundi Tarot. 
and this is what I'll be using to get your messages. So we are looking at, and we want to find out what is it that needs your attention or is asking for your attention. So what is asking for attention? Something that maybe needs your attention. Let's see, pile number three viewers. What needs your attention? Something that needs your attention. two and three cards let's see all right so we have the moon uh, this would be the nine of swords and the queen of wands okay why do i get the vibe that something about your dreams is what needs your attention i say this because of the moon your intuition also needs your attention um, I think what this is trying to say is, especially with the Queen of Wands, because Queen of Wands is definitely energetic energy. So it could be, um, that there's something of a creative, energetic and creative en energy. So what this is saying is that there's something of a creative nature or project that is requiring your attention. It could be an activity of some sort that needs your attention at this time intuitively there's i feel synchronicities that maybe you could be overlooking with the moon and that is what needs your attention it kind of feels like spirit is speaking to you through intuition or through your dreams and i don't know if you're really aware of what the messages are trying to deliver to you or reveal to you but it feels like they need closer attention i think that if Spirit is trying to talk to you through intuition and or deliver messages in your dreams. Uh, it's trying to give hints or drop hints of a creative nature or towards something or some action that you need to, to respond to. I say action because of the Queen of Wands, action-oriented or energy, highly energetic as well. And she takes action. She doesn't sit on anything. She goes after what she needs and desires with passion drive motivation and a, you know a bit of gusto so i'm looking at the queen of wands um you know obviously as a queen she is also intuitive all the queens in the court cards are so we have to me double intuition here the moon also symbolizes pisces so i don't know if you have piscean energy somewhere in your chart as well and then back to the fire signs there's something that's that's maybe with the nine of swords you're trying to make sense of sometimes the nine of swords can talk about sleepless nights so i don't know with the moon and the nine of swords if you have been having dreams uh, bad dreams or dreams you can't make sense of or dreams that have kind of been bothering you if you've been struggling with sleep as well so if you have a sleep issue or disorder or if you're not getting enough sleep that also is requiring your attention because the queen of wands wants to be productive and if you're not getting a good night's sleep you might actually not be as productive or you might not be able to get the energy or the creative energy flowing in order to get things done because she, again, she wants to get things done. She's a go get them energy. So she doesn't sit back. Um, she wants to always take action and allow her creativity to shine or put action and momentum behind the projects, projects she sets out for herself. So when I look at the Queen of Wands, again, she's a fast moving uh, energy here. She is a cheetah in this card deck. I think there could be a tendency with the moon and the nine of swords as well to overthink, right? Overthink and stress yourself out to the point where the queen of wands doesn't take the action that normally she would. So maybe the overthinking is what you need to kind of put aside or need to address in that matter. Sometimes nine of swords can talk about fears. So there could be a need to conquer your fears, trust your intuition, and proceed forward with the Queen of Wands. Conquering your fears could be something that needs your attention or you need to challenge yourself to 
to do. I do feel that spirit is trying to speak to you in your dreams and deliver messages in your dreams, but there's something about it that maybe you struggle to make sense of and that can de debilitate, right? Sometimes debilitate the normal the normal motivation that we have. It can kind of um discourage us when we can't make sense of of the of what we we want to move forward with. Again, if you're thinking about it too much, this is more or less um, a heads up to say less thinking, more doing. Because you, you know why I say that? Because the thinking energy, right, of the Nine of Swords is the thing in the middle between intuition and your ability to act with the Queen of Wands. So it's literally the card between the way your intuitive energy speaks to you or spirit speaks to you and the action the Queen of Wands wants to take. Less thinking, more doing is what I'm getting from this. Also moon energy. Moon, especially with the Nine of Swords attached to it, it is the feeling of, again, just confirming the uncertainty that one feels and the way that that uncertainty could indeed create a vibe of hesitation. The cheetah wants to chase its prey. It wants to take action. It wants to dive in and move forward and um, not be held back. But fear can do that and it can be debilitating. It can paralyze. I always say fear will make you run from your dreams instead of chasing them. The Queen of Wands definitely wants to chase her dreams. The one thing that could keep you from chasing after your dreams is the fear of the unknown. The fear of whether you're capable or not. The fear may be wondering if you have the power to do it accomplish it or achieve it and queen of wands is definitely an a, an achiever she sets you know she puts her passion her will determination drive and ambition behind something and she goes out and gets it like i said the moon energy is the one thing that oftentimes you question the path ahead because you don't see things clearly all the time but you know what with that moon energy just because you don't see things clearly doesn't mean you don't have a gps system within to help guide the way even in the dark So again, what needs your attention is to address the fears, call them out for what they are, name them one by one. Once you can pinpoint what they are, then it's like they kind of have less power over you in a sense. And the more that you conquer your fears, the easier it becomes to conquer those fears every time. And the less control or power they have over you. So another thing that needs your attention again is if you're having anxiety, right? There's probably a need for self-care. And I say anxiety because of the Nine of Swords. If there's stress, any uh, feelings of depression or sadness that needs addressed, again, that needs your attention. Please focus on self-care. At the end of the day, Queen of Wands is a go, go, go energy. So again, if you're on the go, go, go all the time and you're not taking time out for yourself to give yourself the attention and self-care that you need, you know, all that stress, all that go, go, go could also be creating the Nine of Swords energy, could be creating the sadness with the moon energy. And there's a need to kind of calm your being, right? Your body, mind, heart, spirit. Give it, give the Queen of Wands also, if we're looking at it on the flip side, give it a rest. Give, give all the stuff that you have going on at the same time simultaneously, like time out from that for a moment to clear your mind, your body, your heart, spirit, right? Self-care. Because everybody does need a break once in a while, right? So that could need your attention as well. If you're not giving yourself the breaks that you need, 
you could be driving yourself a little batty with the nine of swords in the moon you could be depleting your energy too so that could also require your attention so again there is issues of self-care here that require your attention uh, you don't want to get to a point where you're so built up with anxiety that you know you again you're not taking care of yourself if you're having trouble sleeping that requires your attention too Also, if you're getting messages in your dreams, what requires your attention is that you take a time out so you can meditate on those things and clear and get a clear, um, clear understanding of what it could be that those dreams are trying to reveal to you. Because I do feel that, again, the intuitive energy of the moon and the queen of wands, it kind of feels like there are messages trying to be downloaded to you. But you could have so much going on with the nine of swords that you struggle to make sense of the of the. <clears throat> messages that you're getting in your dreams and then it can frustrate you because you might need to understand what that means in order to help you move towards something with the queen of wands you see how it can kind of relate and connect that way so either way there's a what requires your attention is some time out to clear your mind with the nine of swords to get that all that um chaotic overworked overwhelmed energy that creates stress anxiety sleeplessness bad dreams even sadness depression like that needs to get out the way in order for you to be a clear channel to then be able to take action the way your intuition and spirit nudges you with the queen of wands she does have some things up her sleeve, like she wants to do things, she wants to create things, she wants to take action towards things. Intuition is definitely the driving force that gives her the confidence, right, that she normally has, the confidence to proceed forward with anything that she comes up with. Because she does have a spark. She, she's a kind of a spitfire energy with the Queen of Wands, right? Um, definitely spitfire energy. So it's not like she's not capable. She's total Queen of Wands is totally capable. So sometimes, again, like I'll go back to the original idea I had where it's like overthinking can be the thing that paralyzes you from taking action. So it's more tapping into the intuition, less thinking and more doing while trusting and finding confidence in your own ability and the way the spirit guides you via that intuition. That's what requires your attention. And I say overthinking because of the nine of swords. Intuition because of the moon. And doing, more doing with the queen of wands. Um, also, what requires your attention is if you've been getting animal messages in your dreams, you might want to look those up. We have the vulture, which is Nekbet, uh, Egyptian goddess Nekbet. We also have the queen of wands here as the cheetah. That could be definitely be an animal message or totem for you. I would highly recommend uh, con I would highly consider looking up the vulture and the cheetah both um, because of this reading. So within those animal messages, there could be additional things that spirit wants to get across to you. Again, um, you know, the, the overthinking with the nine of swords, the sometimes our environment, sometimes we're like, what do they call it? Like a candle burning at both ends. It's always, like I said, go, go, go. And that can block us from receiving the downloads, intuitive downloads that the moon sometimes wants to give us. Um, and it kind of feels like this needs to get out the way in order to bring you closer to your intuition, if you know what I mean. So that does require your attention. So if there's anything that's causing you stress, anxiety, worry, um, that could be blocking you from receiving the messages that you seek towards a goal a creative project or something that you want to do again it's all connected that way hmm. 
Um, I could also look at the Queen of Wands and say that there's something, for whatever reason, I'm getting the vibe that there's something that has to change. There's something that has to change about something that the Queen of Wands, perhaps you are doing. Because it could be draining you with the moon and the nine of swords. A valuable, precious life force energy, if you know what I mean. There's a need to switch that up. Something is, it kind of feels like there, there could be something with these two cards, moon and nine of swords, that could be holding the queen of wands back. And whatever it is, that needs addressed. Because it's not creating the conducive environment that the queen of wands needs to push forward. And that is what also needs your attention. So again, it's this feeling of getting this out the way. Whatever this Nine of Swords is to you, whatever creates this stressful environment, could be a job, um, that's preventing you from being your most creative, authentic self, let's say with the Queen of Wands. Um, it could be a job that's getting in the way that kind of requires your attention as far as maybe searching for another job that will alleviate you from this, this energy. And allow you to be free. Hmm. I, I just keep getting the vibe of like deciphering a message. Um, and that is what requires your attention. Our spirit is trying to get your attention. Because you got to consider the Queen of Wands, right? Her spark is like she she has the divine flame, right, of the wand. She has the divine spark, the divine flame. And it's there. It's ready to burn bright, right? But it feels stunted. And I, I'm, I guess it's because of the, the Nine of Swords energy there. So it could be that something needs healed, your mind needs clear of that so the Queen of Wands can exude her prowess, right? She can exude um, everything that she is. She's just charismatic, she's beautiful, she's full of creative ideas. And it could be, okay, maybe with this full moon coming up, uh, as I record this, we have a full moon coming up in a couple days, um, even though this is a timeless message, but no matter when you watch this, it could be that you probably, with these two cards here, need to maybe do a full moon ritual to purge and release any mental blockages or any thing that's stressing you out or causing you strife or grief like you need to purge of that energy with the next full moon from when you watch this video and that is what's requiring your attention in order to liberate the queen of wands so she can be her free spirit itself without anything getting in the way of her creativity without anything getting in the way of her intuition without anything um blocking her flow right So definitely a full moon release is probably what needs your attention with the next full moon from whenever you watch this video. Because with the full moon, you purge, you release, you let go, you make space and get rid of the things that aren't working in order to clean your slate, right? In order to prepare for new intentions to be set come the new moon. So it's just kind of giving me vibes that please don't let another full moon go by without doing that release or that uh, purge, right, to free yourself up. Because, you know, the cheetah always wants to just go. He doesn't want to be held back, right? Whenever he sees what he wants, he goes after it. He chases after it, chases it down. Full speed ahead, literally. So there's something over here that feels like it got to be let go to allow the cheetah to run wild and free. 
And that is what requires your attention. So whatever is causing that needs to be let go because it's keeping you from accessing the messages that are trying to be downloaded, the intuition that's trying to speak to you and nudge you. Um, also, it could keep you from chasing a dream. Okay, so let's see if we can get a couple cards here. <laughs> This is uh, the language of Flowers Oracle. This was recently donated by Stephanie. So thank you, Stephanie, for donating this very lovely mini deck. It's so cute. Oh, there we go. We have another one. All right, so it says Anemone, I think. Yes, Optimism. There you go. Look up and look brightly. Anemone. And then we have the Calla Lily. Look, Rejuvenation, Reawaken, and then Stand Stronger. Yes. Absolutely. Look at her standing strong. She is a symbol of strength and courage and confidence. So yeah, it's like once you clear this thing out the way, you do end up having a newfound sense of optimism. And you feel rejuvenated. You're ready to go at it again, right? You're ready to take action. Because you're able to see things clearly with where the nine of... Swords, you, you can't always, right? If things kind of muffle or muddle your, your mind, your heart, everything. So let's see if we can get some uh, angel numbers, okay, for this reading. I do roll the dice on my channel often to receive extra messages via the numbers. So what I always do is recommend that you look up a source that you can trust to interpret the angel numbers that show up in this reading for you. I don't like to give you a source or recommend one um, because at the end of the day, it could be one that you don't connect with and it could lose some of the magic if it doesn't resonate with you, right? Um, I also encourage you to do your own research to find a source and interpret the numbers for yourselves because spirit might put you on the path to receive other serendipity or synchronicity along the way to looking up those numbers and if i gave you a shortcut i would rob you of that experience and i know how important those synchronistic uh, messages and nuggets are so i wouldn't want to again keep you from experiencing that experiencing that for yourself by giving you a shortcut i also recommend that everybody in the comment section refrain from putting the number interpretation in the comment section as well because at the end of the day again you could be Preventing somebody from finding their own uh, synchronicity by doing so. Um, and oftentimes the journey that we take to research things for ourselves leads us down the rabbit hole to other things. And it, it can be a beautiful experience that way. Um, so again, I always recommend you do your own research. Anyhow, the numbers will indeed maybe confirm some things I've already said in this reading and or provide you with additional messages that you you need personally for you and your situation. So Let's go ahead and roll the dice and see what we get. All right, so we get five, eight, and seven. So 587 is your angel number. Go ahead and look that up. See what that number brings to you. If you feel that this reading has helped you in any way, by all means, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Like, share, subscribe to support this channel. Perhaps even click the bell for notifications so you don't miss out on future content. I upload pretty often. And if you ever want to book a personal reading with me, all you have to do is check me out on Etsy. The link to my shop is in the description box down below. Pay me a visit. I have personal readings there when available. Sometimes they're sold out. I'm just letting you know. Um, but I also have handmade crystal jewelry. Okay, so pay me a visit, uh, look at my shop, have a browse around if you like. Um, so much love to you, pile number three viewers, wherever you are in the world. Please be safe, take care, and keep shining.